Hello my people, welcome back to my channel. This is Burgess Reaction Videos TCR 66 and I am Cindy B aka The Connection Rejection TCR 66. The time is now 12 p.m. and today is October 13th. It's Friday. It's been a long week to get to Friday, but here we are. People, I have not eaten yet. My coffee is ready. What I'm about to do is warm up some very old, no, not very old, um, some very overcooked chicken legs that I made yesterday. I totally forgot about them, and, you know, they overcooked in the air fryer. So I am going to struggle eating them. And... I might make some pasta to go with it, I don't know yet. But let me just start this video with... There are several videos I have already made and several videos I need to, to make. So I'm just going to start this video by saying all of your items came in. Everything that you people bought from my Amazon wish list, all your gifts have arrived. Uh, the bug spray, all three of them, the dish towels for the kitchen, the toilet roll dispenser, the, the ring light, the, um, the 32 rolls of toilet paper came through, the two pitchers and the two packages of the uh, extra filters for the pictures, the water picture. The rechargeable uh, lights, the LED light, night lights came through. All, everything that you ordered, it all came through. It all came through. And uh, some people wanted to remain anonymous and other people didn't care about the shout out, so on and so forth. And one person didn't specify and gave their name as well and did not specify. So just thank all of you. Thank you, Anonymous. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Caroline. Thank you, everybody who purchased the uh, gifts from my Amazon wish list. My relationship, my, yeah, my relationship with Amazon is now officially over. Um, I had some issues with them pertaining to the orders. It's all been taken care of. And um, I have shut down my, my Amazon wish list altogether. And uh, I believe I removed it from every video and from the about section, etc. I have to check the other channel to make sure it's not over there. But um, I will no longer be shopping from Amazon and I will no longer have the Amazon wish list for you guys to shop from because I just don't like the way they do things. And I take the way they do things quite personally, so I totally ended my relationship with them. There has been much that has been happening here, much that has been happening here. Um, we had a break-in, we had a fight in the parking lot, um, person was attacked. The dog got in to save the, um, to save his guardian, his, his human, his, his owner and uh, wrapped its mouth, huge pit bull wrapped his mouth around this man's leg and this man happens to be the dude that is creating all the problems here in, at this building. A whole bunch of people got together and they lied. Protecting the drug dealer, the a-hole. One week they love him and the next week they hate him. You know how it is with crackheads. I don't know if they took the guys. Animal Rescue showed up. I have all this on tape, most of it. I have been recording a lot of stuff. Um, I might pick that one up. It's going to take a lot to upload because it's on my phone. 
Okay, let me just... Again. I have got to eat, so... Gotta go rescue, uh... Took the guy's dog. I'm hoping that they took the dog to the vet and didn't just take the dog based on all the lies that they were told. And uh, that dog clearly got involved to, to defend his own, that's what the dog did. Clearly got involved because that dog just doesn't mess with anybody. The dog doesn't mess with it. All the time I've been here, I never even heard a dog bark. Hold on, I see something else outside the window. Let me go check this. Every time I get ready to make a video, people. Every time I get ready to make a video. I'm not kidding. Every time I get ready to make a video, get ready to make a movie, do anything, something happens. It's not outside. It's not outside the window. But now the films. And We heat this super hard chicken. scam you're running, but I really need you to stop following this number. Do you understand me? It's a simple yes or no question. Do you understand me, you smart ass little punk? Yeah, fuck you too. And your mom. So I'm going to heat up this very dry chicken. And we're gonna make a set. It's played out. So I know people have been wondering. Some people have been wondering. But you know, people will come to unsubscribe to your channel if you you miss you know three hours of making. If you go three hours and don't post a video, everybody's going to unsubscribe. So, you know, I ain't got time to worry about all that. You, you win some, you lose some. You're here today, you're going tomorrow. Uh, YouTube is very wishy-washy. Anyway, as I was saying, um, a lot has happened here in the time that you have it. It's in the time that you haven't seen a video from me. It's been a very interesting exhausting, sad, pathetic, disgusting, 48 hours. Um, a lot of things have gone down. So um, we had the break-in, we had the fight in the parking lot, We had the letters that I had received from Health and Human Services, from uh, the hospital pertaining to the inhaler that was stolen and the investigation and the privacy, the security, whatever they called it. 
based on the fact that all my personal information got out and, you know, so on and so forth. And then, still no official moving date. Still no official moving date. Um, but the property management group has provided a super long list, which I would love to read for you. Which I have done so in other vi hold on other videos. I was trying to track down, I was trying to see if there's somebody downstairs outside. So anyway. Then I had a problem trying to, uh, oh, super long list of things that they say they need to have done. Um, find me exiting, otherwise they're going to charge me. <laughs> a whole bunch of money. And the things that they have in, on there is wash down all the baseboards. Why would I wash down the baseboards? They're just going to come in here and rip up the floor. They're just going to come in here and rip up the floor. Wash down the, the baseboards. Wash down the outside of the door. It was three pages. Two and a half of it was a checklist. Um, pull the refrigerator out. Make sure I clean behind that. Um, in bold letters for your convenience, we advise you to do these things yourself rather than hire somebody to do it because there will be a fee, they will, they will charge you money and so it will be a whole lot easier. Because they know everybody's going to come back and say, we can't afford to hire anybody to do all this work, so they'll like to do it yourself. And they're, at the same time, they said, be careful that the refrigerator is on casters or whatever and uh, don't damage the vinyl floor because if you damage the vinyl floor, pulling the refrigerator out to clean out behind it, that they're going to charge you for that too. And then they want the window ledges clean and the metal frames around the windows and they want the metal frames around the windows inside and outside clean. I'm on the second floor. I mean, come on, really? No, I didn't misunderstand it. I read it correctly. I don't know what's the matter with these people. I, well, you know, everything on the checklist I'm, I'm not doing. Um, the house is going to, the apartment is going to be, uh, when I vacate this apartment, it's going to be left in the state that I have lived in. You know, clean bathtub, clean toilet, clean sink, clean, clean countertops, all of my stuff removed. That's the way I'm going to deliver it. I'm not going to clean the ceiling fans. I'm not going to get down and clean all the baseboards. I'm not going to wash down the windows and the windowsills. I'm not going to do all this ridiculous stuff. I'm not going to make sure that it, none of the plumbing is blocked. I mean, last time the plumber was here, the plumber said that they could not, you know, what the heck is that? I see. The plumber said um, he couldn't get rid of the blockage over there in the and the washer wall drain because all the, all the stuff was too loose and he said whatever food particles are still in there because when the sink got backed up it all comes out the, the washer wall drain he said you would have to open up the wall and he said you're going to have to do a maintenance report for them because that's not what he does 
He said, this is the part I can't get rid of, but he flushed it out with half a bottle of my dish soap and went down to the truck and got himself a bucket and poured it down there, two buckets of water down there. So all this ridiculous stuff. And then new people have showed up, have shown up, new people have shown up, and uh, people knocking on my door. Hey. <laughs> Then there was the major accident right out there the same night that the dude, there was a fight in the parking lot and the dog protected the dude and bit the other guy's leg and took him off and you know, um, so while the police were, and the police were in the parking lot for three and a half hours, I think it was longer than that because I, I sat down and I was doing a video. And I heard a noise outside, and I looked out, and I, I saw two people, and I didn't realize it was a fight. Then it became clear that it was a fight. And then that led to me being on the phone with 911 while I was in the video. So it was a, another video that I had to abandon that I could not upload because I was on there giving the address and giving the apartment numbers and giving names and so on and so forth. And then at some point I picked up the computer. And I aimed it out the window. It was just too much in the video. I can't show it. So. I didn't even turn this on. I'm hungry. I took the, and I took the pill. Go to the section that you don't want in here. And uh, now I'm done with it. I just need to go to, uh, I guess, two thirds of the way in and delete that. As I say, the whole thing is stupid to me because processing just, you know, is ridiculous and it can take out. That's the whole part that I do not understand. You cut, you cut, if you cut pe a piece of it off, if you cut the end of it off, or the middle of it off, or the beginning of it off, you should just, you know, take it out, delete it, and be done. So anyway, I'm going to have some salad. You know, I love myself some Caesar dressing, but that Caesar dressing that I have tastes like somebody threw up in the bottle. I do not, I never tasted no Caesar, Caesar salad dressing like that. Every Caesar salad dressing I have ever tasted has always been truly delicious. I, in my head, every time I had uh, started to make a video, I saw it playing out totally different. And I told myself when I do this video, just don't get into all the stuff. And I just keep getting into all the stuff because I told you, I have to share what's on my mind. That's the only way I can get rid of it. And I can't even be. I'm there in the kitchen. So they totally broke into the place downstairs. I didn't care who burned them. They had been trying to get into that's more than enough salad. 
they have been trying to get into it all day. All this stuff, though, just everything that I told you took place in one day. Took place in about 28 hours. And uh, I got the mail out of the box on the 11th. The Health and Human Services stuff was dated the 3rd. I do not know what this new stuff is they're smoking, but I am totally effed up right now and I'm here in the kitchen and I took my pill and I'm going to eat my food. I'm going to eat my food and I'm not going to delay it because my acid reflux pill is doing its thing. Damn pasta in the water. Let's just me tap it on the floor. Because it's down there in the kitchen. Anyway, the police showed up on the scene for the break here downstairs. Because uh, it was quite loud. And the people who broke in, they had been hanging around all day long. And then they had nerve to come up and start knocking on my door. They knocked on my door so loud and so long because they knew I was in here. And he was like this at the door. And I was like, who the hell are you? I spotted them down there trying to get into the place earlier in the day. And then when night fell, they just, you know, went crazy with it. But right before they broke in, they uh, were knocking on my door. They kept whispering to this woman that had on all these, what's that so bent? Kept listening. Why is the salad dressing so thin? So anyway, knocked on my door so long that um, my na my neighbors came out because they were like, nobody knocks on my door at this hour, and she pretty much calls the police on anybody who does knock on her door when they're doing the daytime. So they were like, you know, that's the quickest we get. Sally dressing my water, I can't figure it out. I'm mad, sir. When I called the police, I'm just letting you know, I called the police on not the person that was attacked by the dog. I, no. When I called the police, I was calling the police to help the person who was being attacked. And they happened to ask me if anybody there needs an ambulance. And at that point, the dude had been bit by the dog. The attacker had been bitten by the dog. The attacker is the one who is the drug dealer who has brought all the mess to this unit. So for the record, I was calling the police to protect the dude with the dog. When it looked like the, the dude with the dog was losing the battle, that's when the dogs jumped in and protected his own. And I called the police just as soon as it got started because the drug deal was caught him Lucius. His girlfriend is cookie. 
he was all up in the dude's face talking about, go ahead, throw the first punch, huh? You throw the first punch. And the dude was sitting on the ground with his dog. And then I saw Lucius, the dealer, walking over to him. And he had a lot of words to say. And then they met. And I was screaming out to him to just go home. Come on, man, just go home. I wish he would have listened to me. I knew it was a setup. Yes, who's following? How many I call you? Yes. Yes, I do not. Sorry, I was just trying to get a and I was in a lot of strength. Give me just a minute. Let me put this on pause real quick so I can step outside. Okay, people, I am back and I'm about to... Uh, I'm about to move this computer over here. It's not even connected to anything. I don't know what I'm doing. So anyway, um, let me, I'm just going to sit down here and I'll eat this food. Is what I to do. So I had uh, another problem. trying to make this video today because I told you every time I go to make a video everything gets all messed up. Every time I go to make a video everything gets messed up. Either the fight breaks out, somebody's not going to do it from the brain. I don't know why my phone will be ringing because people never call me.
put that in, but might as well. I got my phone. Uh, that phone call. It doesn't matter with this chair. So that phone call. The phone call that I just got. That was a uh, somebody with the housing program calling with good news while I was in a bad mood, <laughs> and uh, so I had to put you guys on pause. But I. I just got my move out date. And you remember what I said, I'm not going to tell anybody what it is. I just got my move out date. Is what I just got. So anyway, I just got my move out date. Was that a cross? That went flying. So I'm supposed to put something on this. I don't know what I was supposed to put on it, but anyway, I need this pasta. So um, this water was nice and cold. What is today's day? Okay. So people, I got my move out day, and it's a good thing I um, got all my deliveries. Good thing. Chicken is very well seasoned. Do you know how your computer always gives you these announcements, these messages saying that there are updates available? So the latest update has updated my camera. Is what it has done. So I hope that everybody Apparently the accident that was down there was quite major. Hopefully everybody is going to be okay involved in there. It was major. That's what they were saying. I mean, there were so many lights. <clears throat> but they seemed to get it, the so traffic moving again rather quickly. And then after the traffic started moving again rather quickly, um, it took about an hour, I would say. <clears throat> and then they, another crew showed back up and there was a whole bunch of lights down there. See it all from the window. It was just a shitty sad day. That's what it was. So that all took place yesterday.
everything start blowing the day before. And then the day before that, was when I found myself not being able to stay off the phone, contacting the property management group about what was going on here. So almost three days of hell. I'm in desperate need of a chocolate cake, so feel free to cash up a system. Because if you do, I'm going to call Walmart. Throw the cake in the cart. Because this meal just ain't cutting it. This dried ass chicken. I used to like craft salad dressing, but I don't know what's the matter with these two bottles. The creamy Italian, which I'm trying for the first time. Seems kind of watery, but it wasn't before. What did I put it on the first time? Oh, the first time I put it in tuna fish. On the salad, the flavor is okay, but... And I don't like this mess. This is the crystal light and this is the peach peach mango tea. I love myself some peach tea, but you throw the mango in there and you just totally have to do it. a sad situation all around. I don't give a fuck about the drug deal. But if he would stay off those drugs, he'd be able to better assess the situation. You know, go pick him a fight with somebody sitting next to a, a gigantic big bull. What do you think the dog was going to do? Once he started beating up on the guy. In case of a crackhead not thinking for it. He already had one bad leg. Always walking around acting like he tough. Ain't about that, that big. Just a skinny little thing. But one bad leg. High most of the time. Thinking he got a whole lot of pull. Thinking he the king of this place. You know, the guy in the face of somebody. That is not about the drugs, not about the drinking, not about the uh, dirty dealing. Who clearly stands against everything that he's involved in. And they take the same kind of stuff that they deliver over here that's coming up in my apartment. They take it over here to wherever you get the dog with us too. People are tired of what they do. So sad because he already had one bad leg and the dog gonna attack the other one. 
had to play that scene back in my head. Because that ain't the leg he went on. So now he got two bad legs. Why? Cause you're out there acting foolish. Acting like you're young. He might be younger than me, but he just still old and effed up. The program offers you a good deal. Unfortunately, the program also protects efforts. But we're gonna be stupid. And deal dirty in the program, you always gonna have trouble. You know, I was going to have trouble. This chicken is dry enough, but it's got good flavor. It's not as dry as I thought it was going to be, but it's dry. If you ask me, I just ruined these perfectly good lettuce leaves for this salad dressing. It has just wilted my salad. That's all, I just put the dressing on it. You want them ready? Salad dressing shouldn't do all that to a salad. So yeah, got my move out there. He said, I'm calling you what I thought was going to be good news for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not excited. But I know I'm going to go through hell between now and the moving day. So sad situation because um, the dude who was provoking the dog with the, the dude that was provoking the man with the dog got the hell bit out of his leg. I mean that dog just had his teeth in. <coughs> and it was like every time the same, be still, be still. And uh, so he got his good leg messed up with the dog bite. Right? And then the other guy who loves his dogs, he had two, you know, he's down, he's down to one. And uh, he takes real good care of them, and they're well behaved, and you don't even hear the dogs barking. 
He's sick of all the SHIT around here too. So his dog was taken. I don't know if they took him to the vet. Animal Rescue showed up. That pissed me off too. Because that makes him a sitting target. I just sense a setup. I sense a setup. But I was happy when I saw him later on. Because as I said, after about three hours, the police pulled out of the parking lot. And then two officers came back on foot. A little later. Because they walked down from the accident. The car accident. I thought to myself, what? Why did they come back? And the next thing I know, animal control, animal rescue showed up. And then I saw the dude. That one the dog. I was happy to see him because they told me he wasn't arrested after all the lies that were told out there. That was another hour and some change. Took the dog away. The two police officers came on foot. And then the animal rescue showed up, and then another police car came. About an hour and some change later, they all left. But they didn't take him to the station or anything. And the people were mad. And they were like, man, this is some bullshit. He's talking about that's a service dog. Three of the people that was in the crowd, they have dogs themselves. Medium size and small. And they're not always on a leash. A leash has a leash law. Because your dog is small or medium size. doesn't mean that they don't have to be on the leash.
I don't remember reading anything about dogs that are a certain weight or a certain size and don't have to be on a leash. A leash law is a leash law. And all their dogs would have done the same if they saw somebody beating on them. It's just that a smaller dog could do less damage in defending the owner. What pissed me off about the fight was when the dog owner was on the ground and nobody came. But as soon as it as soon as the drug dealer that's created all the trouble here was on the ground. Everybody came running. I was like, I know y'all don't all plan on beating on this one, one dude. Because he got himself off the ground. Took control. He came running. And then the dude on the ground let out a scream. And they all stopped in their trap. And I couldn't figure out why they stopped in their traps. I was like, what's going on? And I saw the dealer on the ground, the guy with the dog over him. And then it registered that the dog had bit the man's leg. Their clothes were all ripped up. I couldn't figure out how the clothes got so ripped up. In one shirt, at one point, the dude with the dog, his shirt was half off of his body. I think the guy was trying to pull it over his head. And the guy that got bit by the dog. His pant leg was all ripped up. They both looked like they had been clawed by bears. Their clothes did. Other than the dog bark, you don't even have a scratch on them. But their clothes were all torn up. Truthfully, I think all of their punches. I think only two punches landed. With a lot of dancing and a lot of shit talking. So anyway, um, Sad that he doesn't have his dog. Sad that the other guy's good leg got messed up. Sad that all those people lied about what went down. There were dealers involved after the fight. Then when the dealers wanted to get in the dude's face, because he went in the house after the fight. Something had happened between them earlier, and he had already, the dude with the dog had already called the police on the drug dealer. And then the drug dealer went over to him and wanted to, he, he was angry about something. But the police had already been called for something earlier that went down. And then they got called again by several other people, myself included. So 
So now the good leg is messed up. The other dude doesn't have his dog. He's a sitting target, as I said. Eight people. Six of whom live, seven of whom live here. Had a whole bunch of SHIT to sell. And then a dealer who, for some strange reason, has been here for two days. This is the other dealer, not the one that's here regularly that I would refer to as a parking lot pharmacist, but the one that comes occasionally. We spent the last 48 hours here. Most of that time in the unit with the dude who got his leg bit by the dog. But this is what I have to say. And so now, you know, the sad part is this guy needs to be moved and he needs to be moved immediately. Because without his dog, I know it was the setup. The reason I keep saying that is because they viewed him as untouchable because they were all scared of his gigantic pit bull. And I think that the drug dealer who lives here, who is in the program, I think he was looking at the situation and saying, I don't give a F about your dog. If your dog bites me, your dog is gone. Nobody wants the dog here. I don't even care. I didn't even care too much for the dog. Because, you know, you don't have to have it on a leash. All the time. And, uh... But as I said, the dog was not a barker. The dog didn't run loose in the parking lot. If the dog just stayed right by his his, his owner, his, his his person, his guardian, um, and the dog would faithfully follow him. And uh, it wasn't the kind of dog that would run after leaves and run after cars and bark at people passing or immediately stand up and, you know, it wasn't that kind of dog. Well, it's just a well-behaved pit bull. Just big. And when I called the police and I told them what was going on, I was on the phone with 911 before the bite took place. Just as soon as, you know, there was the dancing and there was the, you know, you throw the, you throw the first punch. When I saw that the dude that lives up here that's in the program, both of them are in the program. But when I saw that the, the dealer wasn't going to let it go, I knew SHIT was going to hit the fan. And I was like, go home, go home, go home. I wasn't talking to the drug dealer, I was talking to the other dude. Because I knew he was about to throw it all away. I knew he was going to lose his dog. That's what I knew. I said, he's going to lose his dog, and he's going to be a sitting target. They wanted their dog out of the way. So he would be easier to get to. So they could kick his door in. So that they can, you know, um, catch him when he goes for his walks. So that they can catch him when he goes to the dumpster. So they can catch him when he's sitting outside just getting some sun. So they can catch him when he go to the store. And they were throw when that dog bit that man's leg, they were throwing pissed off. They were all S H I T talking. And the other deal that visits here um occasionally that has been here for like forty eight hours. Then he wanted a piece of the guy. Because after the fight, the guy went inside. He changed his clothes. He came back out. I was like, why the hell did you come back out? And then the dealer was walking down toward him, shit-talking. And... He remembered what happened to the other guy's leg. 
so he backed up and he was staying away from the dog. So I guess he cleaned his dog up, got the blood off of him, got the blood off of him, put on some fresh clothes. And he came back outside to sit and do what he was doing. Because, you know, we have a right to sit there. And I guess he was sending a message to the people that, you know, you cannot make me a prisoner of my apartment. I'm sitting here and I am getting some air with my dog and you're going to approach me. Which would be yes. And this dude with the dog, he's kind of like me. You don't see them swinging with the people. It's him by himself, or him with his dog, and or him talking to a case manager, or him saying hello to somebody because it's the neighborly friendly thing to do, that you're not going to sit and have coffee with. That is all that I ever said. And when people don't get down like you do, do what it is you do, people are quick to call you crazy because everybody calls them crazy out there. You crazy. You crazy. Dog need to be on the leash. You got a dog that size got to be on the leash. You got a dog that size even if it's on the leash. You can't hold it back. You can't hold it back. And the uh, bottom line is anybody with sober eyes, a sane mind, and a, a, a good heart well looked at it and he saw what was clear to see. The dog protected his own. And that dog sat perfectly still while all of this was going on. The dog sat perfectly still on that ground. Did not get involved in it. But when he saw and realized that this was a fight fight and it looked like his owner was getting hurt, he got it in gear, he got up. And you know, it's a big dog. I would say that the dog is probably kind of old. It walks slow. And seems to always be super calm. And this dog got up slow. That's all I remember. And I remember the dog being in a sitting position and then the dog stood up. And it was actually in the lane position. And then the dog stood up slowly. And I was like, this dog. And... When I looked out there, the dog was still, and it was chomping. And it's like each chomp said, don't move no more. They were wrong, you don't know. So, you know, whether the dog was on the leash or not, if somebody is coming at you and begging you to take the first swing at them, shit talking you and begging you to take the first swing at them, whether your dog is on a leash or not, if you have to get it in gear and defend yourself, um, and the thing about this dude, the, 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 the dealer, when this dude with the dog turned his back on him, he was still approaching him, he was still advancing. He wasn't going to let it go. He wasn't going to let it go. And it was twice that this dude had his back to him and this dude kept coming. And the last time this dude kept coming when he had his back to him, he turned around because he was real close to him. And I think that, that God made contact with him. It happened so quick. It made contact with him, and so he came back and he went into defense mode and just backhanded him. And then he backed up. 
and the guy was like wanting more. The dealer was wanting more. And so he was, he was provoking him. He was threatening him. He was making it perfectly clear he wasn't going to let it go. He wanted to fight the dude. And so, that's the way it went down, people. But as I was saying, even if you have a dog of any size and your dog is on the leash and somebody is threatening you, somebody wants to fight you, somebody is just making you feel threatened, feeling like your life is in danger, um, you can't continue to hold the leash and fight with my hand. You, you don't have to let it go anyway. So it wasn't really an issue of the dog being on a leash or not. In my opinion, it wasn't. Because the dog didn't run off and attack anybody. The dog was there. Was there. And his owner was in a conversation or in an argument um, with somebody else. And when that dog saw his owner on the ground and being beaten up, that dog got up and said, uh huh. Uh -uh. So that was defense. In my opinion, that was defense. And to tell the story in any other way, it's just, and try to make it an issue of, well, was the dog on the leash or not? It didn't matter because if the dog, to me, it didn't matter. Because if, as I have said, if the dog wasn't on the leash, what if it had been me with a little dachshund and a dog was on the leash and somebody was. Uh, threatening me and attacking me and I went to defend myself and let go of the leash and then the dog saw me getting the worst end of it and tried to defend me. Would you really make that an issue about whether or not the dog was on a leash? Would you really make that an issue? The size of the dog? The bottom line is you're out there and you're minding your own business. If somebody's got a beef with you because you stand against everything that they're into, they stand against me too. They got, a, they got an issue with me too because I stand against everything that they're into. I stand against everything that they're into. I'm quick to dial 911. I said, if what you're doing endangers my life, and what they're doing is endangering my life. It's creating medical problems for me. Then I'm gonna get my I, I, I'm gonna stick my nose in because you are hurting me. And I'm not gonna stand back and watch somebody else commit a crime against somebody and not do anything about it. I really wanted the guy to just go home. I wanted him to just go home, just ignore him, take his dog, and go home. But this guy in the parking lot was just going to follow him, was just going to follow him to his gym. Because he, he was like this, he was like, he was ready to fight, he was, you know, he had taken the position that's, that I was prepared to, prepared to fight stance. And I thought to myself, this is pathetic. And the other guy was remaining calm. And the other guy, the dealer was like, you know, throw the first punch. Come on, throw the first punch, man. It's threat. Throw the first punch. You scared? You scared? I ain't scared of you. I'll fight you. Throw the first punch. You so bad. Throw the first punch. And every time I heard him say that, I knew it was a setup. But did they come running? When they come running, came running, those other people, did they say that? Did they tell anybody that? They tried to make it an issue about the dog. They all tried to make it an issue about the dog. And they told the people, told the police that he gave the dog a command to attack a man that wasn't even doing it. That's what they said. He gave the dog a command to, to, to attack a man that wasn't doing nothing to him. 
half of the eight were high on drugs or alcohol. The others were just dealing dirty and patting their pockets from dealing dirty. And that's what went down in. So if the property management company, if the leasing office or whoever, decides to evict the deal with the dog because eight people or so tell lies, the program will still house it. Um, they will still house him, but he'll probably have to stay at the shelter until they find his house. Because the program is just not going to pay that $1,400 to let somebody out there lease her. Old management used to let them out, used to let them break the lease without charging because they were like, you know, if we have a situation where somebody is creating problems here, it's easier to just have them run as soon as possible than to delay it for a fee. So, um, What I thought was interesting about it all was all the people who came running, not one person, not even his girlfriend, took that ride in the ambulance with him to the hospital. She was still here wheeling and dealing while he was going. But she is always quick to say, Love you. Love you. And she took a ride with the dealer sometime later and uh, maybe they went to the hospital but when the dude that got bit by the dog was leaving he was like, I'll be back, I'll be back. Laying on the ground, red all bloody, people can't even look at it because the bite was so bad. Ugh. I don't think the dog took a chunk out, he just sank those teeth real good several times. He sank them teeth real good. I, when I look, when they all stopped in their tracks, when they were running, when the dealer was on the ground, because when, when the other, the dude with the dog was on the ground, there was nobody left. And so, you know, all I saw was teeth. And jaws going like that. I was like, he just, you know, going it. So he laying on the ground. They picked him up. They brought him in front of the boarded up building, laid him down. Somebody got him a bottle of water. Somebody got a towel, wrapped it around his leg. Paramedics came. Girlfriend was sitting next to him, smoking a cigarette while they were trying to clean his wound. Then gave him the cigarette. He was smoking. Laying there, they all bloody. Them trying to work on him. And uh, he's smoking a cigarette. Then he gives a cigarette to her and she sits down. I think she, maybe she lit it for him. He wanted a cigarette. And because Paramedics was just kind of standing there and looking at him like he's laying on the ground, smoking a cigarette. And then he gives it back to her. And she's sitting right next to him. And they told her, you know, um, you can't smoke over here while. We're trying to clean the wound up. And so most people would have, you know, put the cigarette out. Most people wouldn't have in the first place. But most people would have put the cigarette out, just crushed it. She got up and did what she would normally do. Finish smoking the cigarette because around here you don't throw a cigarette away if it's got a puff left in it. You crush it out 
and carry it with you and relight it later which has you just walking around stinky all day long um, I was just never one of those people until I went homeless when I went homeless and I was smoking cigarettes I got into that practice and then I realized it's just a stinky thing and I stopped doing it and I just started discarding the cigarettes together. I would try to put it in the air and put it in a plastic and it, the smell just comes clear through whatever you put it in. So it's better to just discard the cigarette. But I understand but she was in let me smoke my cigarette let me finish my cigarette. I mean, not waste my cigarettes. She finished smoking her cigarettes standing elsewhere where they bandaged up his leg. And then returned to his cell. And mine was the only voice that could be heard. Saying, go home. Was she telling her man to go home? No. And I'm just recognizing one of them as being a good guy and being harassed in the parking lot. And I'm like, you know, saying you might win the fight, but you're gonna lose the battle. Just, just go, just leave. Just, I could just ignore the dude. And uh, so anyway, I'm a song with 911 that's for me. It just all took a turn for the worse and you know. But I, I ain't gonna lie about it. I didn't give a get I didn't give a darn about the dealer, I didn't give a darn about the deal. The dealer has brought all this truck. I called the police to protect the dude with the dog. I called the police to protect the dude with the dog. Because from where I was standing, he was just being harassed. He was, he was being worked by the dealer. And I think that the dealer was, you know, just trying to get him at a disadvantage. He wanted it to be easier for him and his people to get to this dude that they view as problematic. They view everybody as problematic. They view me as problematic. Because I object to the funerals. And so I came out of my apartment at some point, like two hours into it, because while the police were out there, you know, wrapping all of this up and getting everybody's stories and, you know, everything, my apartment started filling up. Because, you know, earlier, the unit down below had been broken into. And even though a police officer came out and other people came and took pictures of a, there's a lock down, a toolbox, a lock. They took the doorknob off. It's a big knife, big piece of metal. I guess it looked like something they were using to pry it off. The wood by the window is loose. And nobody from the property management group has come to secure it. So, you know, um, and the police officer that they had sent saw all of the stuff. And more had been added to the stuff that I had been complaining about. There was already two chairs down there. And then all this other stuff materialized. With the Christmas lights that go on outdoor trees have to do with the mix I do not know maybe they were going to use that to I don't know light the inside of the place uh, so that they have enough light to do what they needed to do without turning on the bright lights I don't know what goes in the mind of a crackhead what goes in the mind of on in the mind of a criminal but I got pictures of all of this so the police officer didn't seem to make it to the patio or the point of injury I didn't see her do that, but I saw her with her camera, and I know, I believe she took some pictures. And the thing is, if they would have sent more squad cars, 
to address that issue earlier in the day, then all those panels would have been pulled off and they would have pulled the people that were remaining, that were remaining inside out. Because the two people that broke in, they, one of the, one of them was at my door knocking with this woman and I wouldn't let them in. And then about an hour later they just didn't care who hurt me. So my point is this. My apartment started filling up with humans and there was somebody downstairs in the unit. But it was not the first time that the police were out here and right in front of my unit while um, an intruder was down there lighting my place up with drug treatments. I was like, if this don't be at all. And so I went outside like two hours into all of this and part of the eight people that ran down, I was familiar with all of them and uh, speaking terms with two of them and they came over and was like, Mama, what's wrong? What's going on? What's going on? What's up going on up there? I said, my apartment is full of drug films, and I can't breathe in there. And she said, drugs! <laughs> oh, loud, and the police were over there. I was like, and she was high as a kite, and she couldn't even walk straight. She was like, drugs! I said, it's full of drug films. And she said, can't help you, Mom. Can't help you, Mom. You ain't my neighbor now. Can't help you. <laughs> hey, you gonna live by me? Ain't nothing I can do now. Can't help you. I just didn't even pay her any attention. <laughs> so, I guess this is the first she heard that I stand totally against drugs. So, so she can't help me now. So, you know, yeah. It is what it is. I don't need assistance from anybody who's going to step up and lie because you're just going to be viewed as a non credible witness and you ain't going to be no help to me any damn way. So uh, I'm no longer your neighbor because I object to drug feelings. She was high as a you're saying you want to give me a place to move into where is it at why have I been selected to be the one to receive the house or was it a contest that I entered excuse me So you're giving me, how big is the house you're giving me? He kept trying to get me to say something. He got mad. <laughs> well, stop calling me. That we several times a day. We, we, call me about a property of mine, they say. And they want to know if I want to sell it. 
And so I keep turning the tables around when I got time. I usually just ignore it. But when I have time, I like I don't want to see anything they're saying. And I, I thank them for the house that they're giving me. Ask it. And questions like, when can I move into the house that you're giving me? Keep saying, so you giving me a house? Why are you giving me the house? How big is the house you're giving me? And you know, Sometimes I become terribly frustrated by that. I don't really care. Uh, you want to F with me, I can F with you too. Sometimes I just ignore people, but if you want to F with me, I can F with you right back. So anyway, um, what was I saying before the phone rang? Well, I don't know what I was saying, but I'm going to wrap this video up. Is what I'm going to do. I don't know what I was talking about. Oh, I was talking about that woman who said that I'm no longer her neighbor because I object to uh, drug fumes. And I went outside my apartment to get some fresh air because it was just like, it, it was like I was sitting in a room full of gas. It was like there was a gas leak in here. And I couldn't form a sentence correctly and I couldn't think clearly and everything I wanted to do. I couldn't, I didn't know what, I was like in circles. And I just had to get out. And it felt like my breathing was just going to stop. So I went outside, put some fresh air to get myself straight. And uh, it was the dude downstairs or the people downstairs. I don't know what this new stuff is that they smoke. I really don't. Or, or coconut. I really do not. But it has, had, it has had me in a pretty bad way for about four days. And for about four days, whether put at least in the parking lot or not, and you know, I don't usually go outside my place after dark, but for like the past four days, as I said, whether the parking lot is empty or the staircase is full, it don't matter. It has been so strong in here. It has messed me up so severely that I have had, I have taken to having to go outside after dark. I've been out there as late as 10.30 p.m. and usually um, come 8 o'clock and I don't open my door for any reason. But they have found a way, it seems, to drive my black ASS out into the night. And uh, then other times I've had, you know, to go to the window that has no screens and stick my head out. Just to sit there at the window, getting that air. So anyway, um, people, that is my video. That's what's going on here. Situation is very, very sad. I feel bad for the guy who might lose his apartment because of the dog attack. I feel bad for him because he might lose his dog. The dog is so very well cared for. So very well cared for. And the dude is very neat, always nicely dressed, always looks clean, um, never in the mix of anything, um, unless he is, you know, um, trying to defend himself or he's frustrated with the situation here. And, um, because they will leave his breeze where he come to mind. Leave my breeze where he go to his. And I feel my brain frying again. So people, I have got to end this video. So you see, I've had a lot on my mind and every time I make a video, Every video that I have not brought to you, have not uploaded for you, has been over an hour. This one is an hour and a half. And then I tried it again. Actually, so this is the fourth attempt. Because the one I did last night, I said, okay, let me just make this video while I'm laying down and telling everything. And, um, fell asleep. I sure enough did. Sure enough, sure enough did.
So anyway, I'm gonna end this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Got my move out date. Can't give it to you. But I got my move out date. Sad situation. Because he was so close. He was so close to being out. And I heard the case manager tell him. Um, because he got stuff going on over here too. I heard her tell him. And he was frustrated. He, she told him, you know. People, ain't nobody getting out of here until their lease is up. Ain't nobody getting out of here until their lease is up. As for the dealer who got his leg bit, he'll probably always be here. He probably won't even be relocated. And when he gets relocated, he'll be relocated to another facility like this. This facility, nah, I ain't gonna get into all of that. But I never should have been here. I was brought here because it was an emergency. So anyway, I'm going to end this video one hour and 32 minutes and seven seconds into the video. In case you're wondering where the heck the biking, but people, I ain't been on the bike in what, four or five days. Whenever the last time you saw a biking video was, I got on the bike one time. No, twice after that. The last video you have of me on the bike, I have been on the bike twice after that. And it was only five, almost five miles one time and five miles the other time. So, I have ridden the bike since the last video about eight miles. So you'll probably see me posting a, a video today. I haven't checked analytics to see how many subscribers I have lost because I have not posted a video. And, uh, but I will gain more subscribers eventually. I'll see you guys in the next video. And please do remember, I'm moving real soon. I still got things that I want to do. I still want to have some money in my pocket. There's some more things that I need to buy. And I would appreciate it if you can. If you would go ahead and cash app the sister girl. Please cash app me. Please cash app me. And I'm reaching out to... I'm not talking about the people who have always cash at me in the past. I'm looking for some new people to cash at me. Um, you tune in. You watch my channel. Uh, you look forward to me putting out new videos if you can. I'm not talking to the people who ain't got no money. I'm talking to the people who do have money that have not already cash at me. And I know how many subscribers I have. And I know probably only 200 of you watch my videos. 200 plus of you watch my videos. And so I'm really talking to you guys. I have more subscribers than actually watch all of my stuff. So I'm really talking to about 200 of you. And I hope that I can reach 10 of you. And if I can reach 10 of you, I'm hoping that the 10 of you that I can reach can afford to send me uh, 20 30 40 $50 each is what I'm saying. So with that said, don't, don't fill up my comment section with girl please, I'm really in the middle of that. Anybody who comes to my comment section talking about girl please, ain't nobody gonna I'm just gonna block you. And you're just gonna have to create another name. Is what I'm going to do. So I am, I want some serious help is what I need. I want some serious financial help. And I'm gonna put my cash app out there. But I'm done with the whole Amazon wish list. For people, I'm an adult. I'm an adult. I know how to contact people, companies, and order what it is I need. If you don't trust me with cash, then you shouldn't even be on this channel. If you don't trust me with cash, don't even consider buying me anything, whether it's a, on a wish list or not. Because I don't appreciate being treated like a crackhead who is 
let it go and squander the money on weed and whiskey. I don't appreciate being treated like that. So, you know, that's that I'm a grown woman. I know how to shop for the things that I, I, I want and the things that I need. So, I'm hoping that 10 of you can come through with a, something over 20 each. It would be nice. And uh, I'm not talking to the people who help me out regularly or whenever they can. I'm not talking to the people who have been um, helping me out with anywhere from a dollar to a hundred dollars since my channel has been up since I've had a cash up. I'm not talking to y'all because y'all have done a lot and I would like some new people new people to step up is what I would like some new people who can and as I said don't give them my face and so my comment session with everybody ain't got me. if you ain't got no money I ain't talking to you if you ain't got no money I ain't talking to you if your situation is the same as mine or worse than mine I'm not talking to you so shut up so shut up because you ain't helping the situation, you just hurting it. Just shut up. If you're the type of person who don't want to see somebody get ahead, if you're the type of person who don't want to see somebody get some help, shut up and go my way. If you just sent me something a couple of days ago or last week or last month, don't come in here and say something negative and unnecessary because I'm not talking to you. I'm not talking to you. I said I'm trying to reach some new people. I recognize the people who have helped. And who have helped. Boom. Very generous. Now when I say very generous, gener very generous means if all you had was a doubt. That's very generous. If you felt like you really wanted to do something but you needed the dollar that you was going to send me, that's being very generous. So for the people who have already been very generous, whether it's been a dollar or a hundred dollars, I'm not talking to you. So don't feel like my comment section would be, you know, I helped you out a great deal in the past 30 days or in the past three months. I don't need to hear it. I ain't talking to y'all. So anyway, um... I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Stay safe. Remember to give somebody hope today and every day because it's an easy thing to do. And do not get in my face talking about your videos so are wrong. I think you already knew. I tend to make wrong videos. If you can't tolerate wrong videos, then stop tuning in for what you are disturbed by. You're disturbed by people begging. You're disturbed by people showing their cash apps. You're disturbed by people who are complaining about what's going on in their life and what's going on around them. You are complaining about um, people who always need. You are complaining about people who, who you know, make long videos. You complain about people who don't show you the food that they're eating during the mukbang. You complain about people who eat all the same old boring stuff all the time. You complain about people whose content you think is boring. You complain about people with bald heads. You complain about people and the sound of their voice. If these are all your complaints, then stop bringing your ass over here. Plain and simple. Because you're going to get all of that over here. If you object to it, if it don't sit well with you, if it makes you queasy, then stop coming to my channel where you know it's going to be delivered. Okay? The only reason you come to my channel, I mean, if you already know it's going to be delivered, is because you're the type of person who likes to complain. So don't tell somebody else to stop complaining if you know that's what you like to do. Peace.